how to make a pot of loose leaf tea without it going bitter. That's what I'll be talking about today on Elevens is with Jamie. And I'll be showing you two teas from local purveyors that you're gonna to wanna to try for yourself. And if you stick around after that, I'll also show you how to make loose leaf tea for one if you don't have a teapot at all. Thanks for coming to Elevens is with Jamie. I'm Jamie Kirby and I'm very passionate about tea and I wanna share what I learn as I learn it with you. On Tea Tasting Tuesday, I will always do one kind of tea that is a Camellia sinensis from the actual tea plant. And then I will always be sharing one herbal tea. This week is really special because we'll be doing loose leaf tea. The thing is with black tea or green tea or anything that comes from the Camellia sinensis plant, I find that after just a few minutes, it often gets very, very bitter. I mean, the original method to make tea in a teapot, you just warm up your teapot with some boiling water, dump it out, add your tea leaves to the pot, pour over the boiling water, let them get friendly in there, and then pour the tea for your guests. The problem is if you're all sitting around talking and the tea is has been brewing for a while and you all have small cups of tea, then the tea can sit around in the water too long and then just get acrid, bitter, and not very pleasant tasting, which means you might have to add more sugar or more milk to make it pleasant. So what's the way around that? I would say that the most popular method right now for doing a teapot with loose leaf tea is to have a special teapot that has a specially designed infuser that fits right inside, like so. I'm gonna demonstrate this method using this herbal tea which is a vanilla is the vanilla chai flavor from a local place in Spokane that's nearby where I live. And it is a rooibos tea, which means rooibos is called a red leaf tea, but it's really not from Camellia sinensis. Um, it's native to Africa, this leaf. And to that, it's gonna have ginger, cinnamon, cloves, cardamom, orange, and natural vanilla flavor. And I'm going to do this the Western British style where you do one teaspoon for me. Oh, sorry. We're going to be polite. One for you. One for me. And one for the pot. This smells so good, by the way. Now, if you have more guests, you're supposed to add a teaspoon for them. I'm going to need a pot holder for this. It's very hot. So I've got my water going. And here we go, in it goes. I'm gonna wait a second, wait for that water to go down, 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 down. It's a good thing I've been working out. This is pretty heavy, just sitting here. We wanna put in enough water that would equal about three servings, which is what we put into the pot. That should be about good. Now, I'm gonna let that steep for just a bit. I'm gonna give it a smell. It's spicy. The reason why this is so popular is because I can pull this out and it brings all the tea leaves with it and then leaves just the tea liquor, as it's called. You'd be surprised how microscopic the little cuts are in this glass strainer, but it still is going to leak out little bits and pieces, which is fine. You can, it's kind of fun to have little dregs at the bottom of your cup. You can read your tea leaves or something like that. One of the drawbacks though, to this method, though it's convenient, the tea doesn't really have a chance to intermingle and really dance about the bottom of the teapot, which is where all the flavor gets released and where the tea leaves are able to unfurl. That being said, it does look like this is getting some good mixing. This should be about ready. First, what I do is I'm going to use the tea strainer and just gently lift it up. It'll take a couple seconds, depending on how, how many holes the strainer has, it will take a couple seconds to drain out the excess water. And then I'm just going to place it in a dish. I happen to have this lying around, so I'm using this to catch my dregs. You always want something. 
So depending on how big your tea strainer is, you're gonna want a dish slightly bigger. So now I've got my vanilla chai tea from Elle's Tastes and Tea Market in Spokane, Washington. And we're going to pour it in here and give it a taste. It's giving off a nice mild scent that is pleasant and rich. I can definitely smell the vanilla. It's way too hot to taste right now. So I will just give that a second. Like I said on my intro for YouTube, I've said that we're gonna be talking about tea, but a lot of other things as well. So what are some other things that you wanna talk about? I learned recently about this thing called being a scanner, which is basically what I described myself as in the intro video. I wanna know about you. Are you the type of person that you've always known what you wanna be when you grow up? Or are you the type of person that thinks you know what you wanna be and then you don't know and then you try something and you don't love it, but you like it enough and then you give up on it. And so you're one of those people that just is interested and fascinated in everything. Or are you the type of person that just hasn't found what you wanna do yet? Those are the kinds of things I like to talk about. I can definitely smell the hints of vanilla as promised, which is good. That's a nice flavor. I could drink this plain. I don't need to add anything. It's a rich flavor and yet it's mild and light at the same time. So it's a very nice herbal masala chai blend. I would definitely recommend this. Are you ready for the oolong tea? I am. I think I'm ready. Oolong needs to be a certain temperature. So 195, almost boiling. So basically you boil it and then just give it about a minute or two, depending on how hot or not hot or how good your pot is at retaining the heat. This is my tea kettle that I keep on the stove and it's sitting on top of this nice little trivet that my good friend Anne made. Isn't that gorgeous? Hi, Anne Cannon, I miss you. So I'm going to check the temperature. Basically, you don't want to scorch it. This is about 175. It's about 20 degrees lower than I'd like it to be or that the suggested amount is. I think we're good. So this method is the two pot method. And in my opinion, the very best method for making loose leaf tea in a pot, but it does take a little bit of extra effort and it also takes a little bit of extra equipment. Not only do you need a pot and a strainer, you also need a second pot. Now the way around this that I figured out on my own is you can, if you don't have a second teapot, because teapots can get expensive, just use a liquid measuring cup. And you can put the tea right in there, pour the boiling water over it, and then use a strainer and pour it into your second teapot. I guess you could call that the rebel version of making tea in it with the two pot method without two teapots. For this week's Camellia Sinensis, I'm going to be doing a gin shan cream. And I got this from Tea Zanti, which is in Salt Lake City. And I used to live near Salt Lake City. And this guy was great. He would take trips around the world to learn about tea. And he was really amazing and very knowledgeable. So if you are in the Salt Lake City area or ever get a chance to visit, you might want to check out his tea shop. It's great. First, before we go any further, this tea, when these unfurl, they get quite large, but right now they're just these teeny tiny rolled leaves, which is one of the reasons making a tea like this, a loose leaf tea, particularly one with very large leaves, you want those to have as much room as possible to spread out and do their thing in your pot. So I'm going to add these to my pot right here. One for me. <laughs> I'm so rude. One for you, one for me, and just a little bit for the pot. The reason why this is called Jin Shan Cream is because it has a buttery flavor and it really, like, it really does smell like butter. And what Scott explained over at Tea Zanti is that when they're producing the tea leaves and they're processing them, they actually sit the tea leaves over a big, huge uh, screen and underneath the screen, milk is just bubbling away to infuse the tea leaves with the essence of milk. 
it's really amazing. And then it has this beautiful golden, light golden liquor as it's called. So I'm going to pour my water in. One thing with these tea leaves that you wanna do, especially the ones that are hand rolled, sometimes it takes a little bit of time for them to unfurl. So in this case, I'm actually going to rinse this tea. I've got a small strainer right here, nothing fancy. And I'm just gonna pour this over the strainer and let it go. If I were at the sink, I would just pour this right into the sink with a strainer so that I wouldn't lose any of the leaves. Chopsticks are always handy with tea. So now that those have been rinsed, I'm going to pour in some more. Ooh, I got lucky. There's just enough water. Okay, now this is going to steep for about three minutes. This would be a good time to put the tea cozy on right here to keep it warm. Now I'm showing you with this nice glass, beautiful teapot so that you can see what's going on inside. But for everyday purposes, I am lucky enough to have two very cute teapots that I found at TJ Maxx for not very much money. And they're identical, I love them. And I'm lucky enough to have this tea strainer that fits perfectly inside all the way. Though this could work and it would help me rescue the tea dregs out of it and then leave the liquor at the bottom, it might not give the tea a chance to really get, a, get around in the water and really come into its own and its full flavor. I would put the tea in here, pour my hot water over top, put a tea cozy on it, well, put the lid on, put a tea cozy on it, let it sit. And then when, it's, when the timer goes off, I just simply pour all of the tea straight into this teapot with the strainer inside. I lift the strainer out, put it to the side, et voila, we have a perfectly steeped pot of tea with no tea dregs sitting in there making the tea bitter. Most of you probably don't have two identical teapots with a handy strainer that fits perfectly inside. But when you can find one, you'll be so happy. I'm gonna put those to the side. For this teapot, I found a strainer that fits perfectly inside of this. Now, this one is quite a bit larger. I could do the one pot method in here if I chose, but I'm showing you the two pot method right now. And then you gently, slowly, carefully, pour the tea all the way in to your second pot. And there we go. Most of the tea dregs stay inside like that, but we have a few that have migrated over here to the strainer. We'll set that aside. All right, lid on. And now I'm going to taste the Jinshan cream. It has such a beautiful color, light golden, with a slight green tinge to it. Ooh, it's one of my favorites. It really does. It has a buttery flavor to it, and it's not too bitter. There's some astringency because I let it go for a full five minutes. It's perfectly mellow and pleasant. I wouldn't add anything to this tea. This is one that when I'm not eating between meals or something like that, and I want just a cup of tea with no extra sugar or anything like that, this is one that I will make for myself. And I will just keep making multiple pots throughout the day because I can reuse the leaves. And the buttery flavor usually stays throughout the day as well. So that is one of my favorites. Thank you, Tea Zanti, so much. So tell me, what is your favorite kind of tea? And what is your favorite method for brewing a pot of tea? I'd love to know, put it in the comments below and we'll have a great discussion. As always, this is an open conversation. If you put comments below, I will try to respond to those and make new videos that will interest you. As I promised for our bonus section, 
This is how to brew a cup of loose leaf tea when all you have is a mug and some random kitchen gadgets. So I've got a strainer that sort of balances, not really, I'll have to hold it. And I've got some boiling water right here. I don't even need a spoon. I'm gonna just eyeball it. I've got my oolong tea right here, just a teaspoon. Stir it around. We're not even gonna bother with rinsing. It's just going in there. We'll wait, we'll watch it until it completely unfurls and then we'll pour it in here and we'll have ourselves a cup of tea. When I had my first 11s of society meeting with my friend, Brooke, she came over, I invited her to tea and she thought that I would have like a beautiful tea set. And all I had were some teacups and saucers that I had gotten at a, as a wedding present. And I didn't even have a tea kettle. I literally was just boiling water on the stove in a saucepan. And she was shocked. She's like, I thought you'd have a teapot and all these cute things, but I didn't. The most important thing is serving your tea, getting together with friends. It doesn't matter what kind of tea things that you have. It's a passion of mine to collect these things, but you can do it right here in a Pyrex dish with a strainer that you use for everything. Yeah, you don't even need a tea kettle. You literally can just boil this water in the microwave, let it sit for a few seconds if you're going to do an oolong. If it's a black tea, the tea can go right in right after you pull it out of the microwave. This is steeped a while. The leaves have unfurled and bloomed for us. And now I'm going to very carefully, you can get smaller strainers than this, but I'm going to eyeball this and pour it right inside. Like so. You have to watch where you're going because if you pour too, if you have too much water in here, it can overflow. There you have it. A perfect cup of tea with stuff you probably already have lying around your kitchen. I think this has been a really fun episode. Thank you so much for watching. And if you have any questions, comments, please put them in the description down below. And of course, subscribe, hit the bell so that you'll know anytime I have some new thing I wanna talk about on 11s is with Jamie. Thanks so much for watching and we'll see you soon.